God's plan, someone stop me. I've been sent here from Illuminati. Evil scriptures written on my body. Me and What's up, guys? I've been saying that I'm gonna post tutorials for a long time, and I've just been so busy with client work that I haven't had the opportunity to. I am still busy. I still have a shit ton of client work I need to get done, but I need to get on this YouTube tutorial game, so here we are. Anyways, this video is just going to be a quick little trick I learned to increase the dynamic range of your video. Essentially, what we're gonna do is flatten out the image even more so than your picture profile to retain more details in the highlights and shadows. Doing this obviously increases the amount of detail in your highlights and shadows when it comes to image quality, and then it also increases the amount of color that you will see in your highlights and shadows, so it helps retain the original colors of whatever it is you were filming. This is why I'm calling it an HDR enhancement. We're not actually filming in HDR, we're just increasing the dynamic range of footage you have already taken given this really simple trick. It's really fast. This is actually something I learned from watching tutorials from colorists on YouTube because who better to learn how to color footage than from people who do it as their full-time job. The more videos I create, the more I learn that coloring is just huge when it comes to overall quality of your video. A lot of freelance videographers out there don't pay nearly as much attention to coloring as they should, and that's what I made this tutorial for so that you guys can learn these tricks that I'm learning to improve all of your footage. We're gonna obviously go into Premiere. Here's the finished um, look that we're gonna try to accomplish. The footage originally looked like this. So it's just like your typical flat profile image and we color correct it to look like that. This is just an unfinished music video I'm working on. As you can see the colors aren't all done yet. I'll give you guys a little preview of this music video. It's turning out really dope so far. <laughs> Pretty proud of that little text effect I did, but onward with the tutorial. So what we're gonna do is we take the original footage, which looks like this, and let's try to color correct this just normally. I'm gonna open up my scopes, make sure we have the correct range of luma values, bring down the blacks, add in some saturation, fix the white balance a bit. We'll fast forward through this. And we come up with something that looks a little bit like this. Honestly, this is pretty good on its own. Only thing is you can see that the highlights are kind of blown out here. There's still detail there and the highlights are kind of blown out up here. There's plenty of detail there. This is a very usable shot. I filmed it and it came out very well, but we can do more than that. Let's, let's compare this to my final colored footage. This is what I did just now. This is what I'm using in the final product. As you can see, there's a lot more color saved in the sky. You can see a lot more of the blues up here, and you can see that there's a lot more detail in the highlights right here. That's the effect we're trying to accomplish. See, the highlights and shadows are just a lot more harsh in the clip I corrected. Of course, we can go in and keep tweaking the shadows, keep tweaking the highlights until we're at a good point but it's really gonna mess with your contrast playing around with the shadows, highlights, and contrast like that. The way I accomplished this look and made everything pretty smooth throughout the image, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the original footage, go to effects, add a luma curve effect to the footage. And what the luma curve does, and I just recently found this out by watching coloring videos, you can adjust the exposure throughout the entire image with the luma curve and not affect the contrast of the original image very much. So the way I do this is I add an S curve, but backwards. So you know how you add contrast in Lumetri with um, contrast, you can add contrast by bringing the shadows down and bringing the highlights up. We're gonna do that, but in reverse with the Luma curve. So you add a, you bring the shadows up and bring the highlights down. And notice what that does is it flattens out the image even more while still retaining the original colors and in fact, improving them. So what you do then is you have to go back into Lumetri, add in your contrast curve, and everything just comes out so much smoother. You can add in the contrast without things getting too harsh. Add in your colors again. Let's say one, five, that's a bit much. Bit warm. And we end up with something like this. And when you compare this to the color correction job I did without the Luma curve, it's just 
notice like that looked good initially, but this looks better because it retains all those details in the highlights. And really that is it. Add a luma curve, do a reverse S, and it flattens out the image some more, makes it more flexible, and brings back some colors in those highlights and shadows. Anyhow, that is it for the video. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want to see more tutorials like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel and comment down below if there's anything specific you want to see. I know I do a lot of special effects and After Effects work, so if there's anything you want to see tutorial-wise from After Effects, let me know, and I will make a tutorial. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Oh, wait, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. It's at Drew Kosak. Okay, bye.